Hello and welcome back to your only Aki's preview for this week's game against Greenock Morton. We're just off the back of a good performance but disappointing result against Kelly. And of course, a good performance and a good result against Queen of the South. And then we'll touch on that game uh, first. David, again, I think it was one of those situations where we played well, we dominated the game, we created plenty of chances, we just could not score. We were not clinical enough because me and you said after the game, that was one of those ones that easily could have been two, three, four nil if it had been more clinical. No, totally. There's, there's definitely a few levels to that result though because it's easy to kind of jump the gun and like look at certain aspects on paper. But one thing you, you just started, it was a good performance. It was actually, more I think about it, it was a great performance. We really did dominate the entire game. Um, we didn't, I mean, at first I thought, like you say, on paper, the Queen of South were really poor. But at the same time, we didn't really let them play at all. The mm. Pesco and Hamilton and Brian Easton um, in particular were, were absolutely solid. Kieran McDonald was more further forward, so that's the only reason I'm not kind of putting him in there. But again, he did his defensive duties perfectly well as well. But we really didn't let them play at all. There was no one, like that wee player Connolly and um, Cochrane and things like that, guys that I'd heard they and were looking to kind of see that nobody really impressed me there. And again, when you look at the the scoreline, it's easy to think we could have been more clinical, but at the same time, like I said to you on the day, there's two cleared off the line. Moyo was really unlucky not to get the end of the ball, um, and then you've got Josh Mullen missing the absolute set in the first half. That, of course, um, is he could be more clinical, but other than that, we, we really did. Um, the only thing that, like I say, that maybe goes unnoticed is that that big save for, for Joe Hilton. The end. Uh, late in the second half, it was a shot out, absolutely nothing, and it was going on target. It went in the wind as well. That is kind of the epitome of our season, where in the past that's went in, mm-hmm. and that would have been the result. And everything that we've dominated, um, is, is just went down the shitter. So the fact that it's all kind of laid plan and it was a comfortable game, no doubt we do need to score more goals and put that game to bed. That could have been to bed at half time easy. We could have been three up. Um, at half time, so no, it's, it's 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 definitely a big improvement. We really did dominate, um, and it makes you think we've dominated all season. But now we've kind of starting the kind of game management. It looks like it's getting a bit better. So uh, yeah, uh, onwards and upwards. You mentioned Moyle getting a, being unlucky not not to get end of a ball, and I thought Moyle played really really well actually. Um, one a lot of the headers that came his way um, was kind of pushing from the front, defending from the front, as I like to say. And, it, and I thought actually he had a good game. But again, Andy Ryan coming on, making a difference. It just highlights how important Andy Ryan is to the team because this is no disrespect to David Moyo. I just said he was unlucky not to get a goal. But I honestly think that if Ryan wasn't fit and we played the full 90 with Moyo, we wouldn't have got the goal. Um, Andy Ryan just offers something so completely different. He's, he's a more intelligent player as well. You know, when it was a case of when he came on, I think we all kind of thought, well, it's only a matter of time till we now finally get that get that goal. Um, but overall, no, listen, I thought Moyo actually played well, and as you said, unlucky not to actually get a goal. Aye, aye. Um, I totally agree. He played well. Um, I think it's just that the role that he excels in is just not what we play. We, we He's perfect as part of it too. Um, it, it does all the dirty work. It, it does well. It's just like you said, when, when Andy Ryan came on, just a couple of things, there's a wee moment where the ball's going out for throwing and he, he, he back heels it and gets the ball in play and actually creates so much space. He gets, he challenges the keeper like for, for by kicks and things like that. He's just, he's all over the place and he's moving and he is just so much more offensive than David Moyo. Um, but I, I'm caught, I, I do think that the pair of them will eventually work really well together. Andy Ryan's just done what Andy Ryan does. I think that's what four or five league goals now. Um, he's he's keeping up with the kind of apart from McKenna, I know, uh, both he's he's keeping up with the kind of front runners. A good point that you made to myself after the game was let's not forget he was brought in as a backup. In all fairness, the intention for him really was to be that kind of come up to the lower level and see what you can do, mix in, but he really is excelling. If, if anything, he's been our best player Absolutely. this season um, so far. Um, so 
uh, well, there was some questions when we seen the team sheet or why he was left out. We did think surely he hasn't dropped. It must be a niggle. We find out it was a niggle, but that does show you, and that result it especially shows you that we really would be lost without him at the moment. Um, like you said, there only was what twenty odd minutes left when he came on, and like you said, we were still confident. Here we go, we'll get it now. It shows you the impact he's had. So it's it's, it's excellent to see something like that do so well because I I did say if we go back a few podcasts that I had a feeling that this would work. But don't get me wrong, I said that about Blair Olsen and <laughs> fucking a million others as well. Um, so it was a kind of <laughs> process of numbers, to be fair. But... And not to not to put a damper on, again, what was a good performance and good result, but again, the midfield was very weak. And, you know, I know we sound like a broken record saying it. I know we're short on numbers there anyway, but... You know, that midfield three of, of Mimna, Hughes and Mullen, it doesn't offer much defensively. It doesn't offer a huge amount going forward either. At the moment, it is weak and will cause us problems if the if the opposition have a midfield that can overpower um, the young guys that are in there because they're not exactly physical in them either. So I think if we come up against that, it will be a big, big worry. Um, and two more players I just want to mention quickly before we move on to, uh, to Morton. Was two players that Stan brought up in our press conference, which was Marley Redfern and Lewis Smith on either wing. They were absolutely fantastic. Lewis Smith in particular in that first half um, was brilliant. He, he was walking past players. Um, he, he, he was brilliant, created plenty of chances and obviously had that fantastic through ball that ended up leading to the goal. A bit of, a bit of talk about whether it was actually meant for Mullen. Was it meant for Redfern that through ball? But listen, we won't question that. We'll, we'll let him kind of bask in the glory of it. But they both had very, very good games. Energetic, in your face, pressing. What did you make of those two? I thought in the, the first half an hour, uh, Marley Redfern was outrageous, like really fantastic. There was a moment, I can't remember exactly what happened now in hindsight, but he just shifted his mind and opened up so much space for himself and then he just right into the box. Um, maybe... The early signs are showing that he needs to know when to release the ball um, a bit more. Um, but on the ball, he's so confident and so comfortable. Um, and when you look at the, the likes of himself, Lewis Smith, and even McGowan in the, the cup game, it shows you that we, we actually do have, well, maybe in the next couple of years, we'll have some really good creative options on the outside as well. Uh, Lewis Smith, um, that's just what he's capable of. You know what I mean, we've said it a million times on this podcast about him. Um, he, he really is um, a fantastic player on the ball. I think that was plain to see for everybody that they just couldn't deal with their players running at them. Um, the two of them were excellent. Um, I, I thought that they really did. And I, I, I would like to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that ball was on purpose. Really? Um, the only thing that I thought was, was and this, this isn't me slating the guy in any way, but I, I, I I think that it was shown that Molly didn't really have the pace to kind of see that out. I thought he was going to get caught. Um, and maybe, like I say, I haven't watched a lot of George Molly in the past. I expect him to be really pacey in a, a winger fight, but he is kind of showing him this kind of deeper midfield role that he's, he, he has got quality as well. But um, it, it was a wee bit evident that he didn't have the legs for that, I think. Let's look forward to this weekend's game no, against. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look forward to this weekend's game against Morton. Morton without a win in their last five games. However, they do have four draws, so the draw masters, and of course they've got one loss as well. Aki's in the last five: two wins, one draw, two losses. Let's not forget who their win came against. Now we said at the start of the season what we thought of Morton, and when we had Joel Sked on the podcast as well. You know, we predicted they would be one of the relegation sides. That's where they're sitting at the moment with Inferman, so not having a good season at all. A lot of those games are now nows. Um, a lot of those draws are now nows. Sorry, they can be strong defensively. They just lack a goal scoring threat. Now we said all this as well back when we were playing the reverse fiction. Of course, look, look what ended up happening. So, you know, we can see all this. We can see all we want, but if we do not show up on the day, it means nothing. What are your initial thoughts going into this this Morton game? What are you expecting to happen? Going to be up front. I'm expecting us to win this because I'm expecting us to learn our lessons for the last time. 
we absolutely dominated that last game. They did nothing apart from score and win the game. You know what I mean? It's, it was an absolute sickening up that game because they looked poor. They really didn't compete either. And then that one chance, uh, Ugu took his chance. They actually did really well for the goal, to be fair, and it was a good finish. But that was a total snatch and grab, that game. Um, I'd like to think we've learned what to do in possession a mm-hmm. bit more since then. Um, I think we, we've learned that to commit. I don't see our, our fullbacks committed too far forward as we have been as well. Um, something that I do actually want to discuss a bit later on about, I mean, Jamie Hamilton, basically last two games at right back. We should have learned our lessons. Um, I think we also need to know that these games, it's just all about the, the kind of snatch and grab. We need to, I would like to see is press from the off and then build on that as well. And I think we need to score at least two here. Do you? I see. I, I'll give. I'll give the score predictions obviously later on at the end of the video. But I can see this being another, another one goal in it kind of kind of game in my opinion. But before we go into that, we will ask you about the lineup. I know you've got your notebook out. I do. Got your lineup noted. Um, a few things for me just before I ask you for your full lineup. Um, in my opinion, I think Joe Hilton stays in goal. He was brought, in a, was brought in a last minute change. Fulton picked up an injury in the warm up. Joe Hilton didn't have a huge amount to do in the game, but when he was called upon, handled it very well. Um, I don't see any reason why he should be he should be dropped, given obviously how poor Fulton's been the last few games. So for me, Joe Hilton stays in. Um, I, 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 we'll talk about the fullbacks in a second. Um, I think your back four stays the same. I think you've got Hamilton, Popescu, Easton and, and, and McDonald. Not a lot of changes you can make to the midfield. Um, given a lack of options, but I would like to see a way of him to get Andy Ryan and David Moyo both in the team if they're if they're fit from the start. That's what I'm hoping to see again. So, well, you're, you're almost reading my lineup. Off I'm my a, paper. Listen, you, you you go ahead. You, you give us your lineup. Kind of how, how are you so, standing on it? Exactly like you said, Hilton and goals. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a couple of moments in the first half, and I don't know if it's just an experience. Tim, you, you got to remember he's not played a ton of first team football. Just a couple of times he just. To me, it was quite shaky as the game went on. I think he could get a bit more composed. Second half, he was a lot better. And like you say, it was him from the start that kind of started that passage of play that led to the goal as well. So, And like you say, the big save at the end, that that was just a typical Aki's conceding goal. If it was, I just you could have seen that hit in the back of the net. But anyway, the we got away with what we deserved in the end. Um so it's Hilton and goals. The back four are uh, Hamilton, McDonald, Pesco and Easton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe Sean Watt is injured because I've seen him in the stands. In the stands, yeah. Yeah, so I assume he's injured. But at the end of the day, I was actually really impressed with Brian Easton. It was a kind of no-nonsense. Um, yeah. Cleared exactly everything that came near him. Um, professional. Again, Pesco, he has, a, if anything, has a bit of arrogance about him, I think. Where he's, if, it, if, if anything, he's... He's a bit too relaxed, but on the games like the Queen of South game, it works perfectly for him. There was no danger. He did everything, but at the same time, if they had a bit more about them up front and someone to pressure somebody like him, he has that in him, I feel. But he he, he's, he played excellent the other night, so let's not kid on. So um, back four stays the same. In the middle two, now I'm going to go with Josh Mullen for one. Um because he is playing the kind of huh? deeper role. Um, I've written down Regan Mimno, but I don't see them playing him. If he's dropping any of those, he would drop Mimno and have someone like Rowan Hughes. Do you can't. think? I think he would. I personally wouldn't, because the thing for me is, don't get me wrong, Rowan Hughes gets a much harder time than he merits. Um, I don't think he's been terrible, but the frustrating thing with me in that Queen of South game is it just slows everything down so mm-hmm. much. The amount of times, like, for example, that pass that led to the goal that split through the whole field, if he was there, he'd have caught it, pivot, let players get further up. If I even passed it back, all momentum would have been gone. He did that a good few times in the first half, just killing all momentum and things were just slowing down too much. I don't see him going with this. Obviously, this is early enough, but I would say Mullen and Mimno in the middle. Now, 
personally, I would have Mullen further forward, but you right. can't have just one man in the centre of midfield. And the reason I've done that is to accommodate having Moyo and Ryan up front, and obviously Red Fern and Smith um, on the wings as well. So it's almost like a four-four-two, basically. Essentially, yes, but I don't see that happening. Like I say, you can't not have Josh Mullen, but I don't see him. I don't see him going with the two up front. If I'm being honest. I can see him dropping what I expect him to do is I can see him dropping Redfern and having what he did before was he had Moyo through the middle, kind of Andy Ryan out kind of out on the kind of right right side, cutting inside, um, and then Smith out on the left and kind of having that as an interchangeable three. I think I can see him going with that rather than the two just planted up front together. I hope not because I mean Redfern's definitely merited a start in this game. Um and also like the point we've made, th- these kind of teams can't deal with players running that one. So get the ball in the deck, get the two guys out wide, play it into the middle with it having, like I say, the two men up front. Um like I say, I, I think it will actually be the same starting the living as the Queen and Saves game. Um I don't know about Andy Ryan's Fitness, and then, if he will yeah. be ready to start. So I actually feel anticipated being the same start in the living. Um, but obviously, this is why we have these conversations. These are purely our opinions. I would just like this game to be a lot more comfortable. I think two goals um, would do it. So I would love to see us go into halftime with 2 0 lead. It will come back to bite me in the arse, but I'm confident after that performance. Um, well, don't, go, well, don't, don't give your score prediction yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Um, before we do that, I want to ask you about, you mentioned Jamie Hamilton coming in at right back and it was a, a nightmarish performance for, for Luke Matheson last time he played against Partick Thistle, obviously. And since then, Jamie Hamilton's come in and did very, very well. You know, we've mentioned before in the podcast, as, as Brandon likes to say, he is the love child of this podcast, Jamie Hamilton. And we've mentioned before about playing him in midfield, about playing him at right back. Um, and now that he's doing it, I think he's thriving. He's not as much of an attacking threat. We know that, but he's a lot stronger defensively. And what he likes to do, and what he did against Queen in the South and against Kelly, is pick the ball up and drive on the inside. And that Mm -hmm. does cause problems because he's one of those players that once he kind of gets going, it's hard to shove him off. And he's good technically to get by players as well. So once he cuts the inside, he he can be a danger in that way. He's just not running the wings as a Luke Matheson or even like an Aaron McGowan would have done before. So um, I do agree with you. I think it's his position to lose at the moment. I, Luke Matheson is not going to come back in that team unless it's uh, unless it's like in the cup, you know, and and you know he's making a he making a change here or there, um, or like an injury happens or whatever. I think Jamie. Yeah, Hamm- remember this kid's on loan. So there'll be certain obligations. So it's, it's all right. Like you say, on merit, Jamie Hamilton deserves that right back place. But you never know the development manager at Wolves could be on the phone and say what's happening. No, it's listen, that, 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 yeah. about games, so that, that, might, that might be the case. That might be the case. But at the moment, I don't think either of us can argue that Jamie Hamilton oh, no, definitely not. deserves that, that starting lineup spot. 100%. I thought you had more to say about him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had more to say, but it was you that brought the topic up. I thought you had more to say, but that's all right. But we'll go, we'll go ahead and get our score predictions now. Um, I'll get yours first. You said you're confident in this game. I know, I know, I am. Um, like I say, we, we, we really dominated and we played some really good football. I mean, it was just chance after chance um, at times in that game. Um, <laughs> I would lo- I'd like to think that we are going to be doing that kind of style of play again because I didn't see any kind of football from Morton at all the last time. I think with the back four as it's been as well, I think it does give me a bit more assurances. Mm-hmm. I just want the goalkeeper to be a bit more um, solid as well. So I'm going to go for 2-0. Um, I, I, I think we need to be a bit more clinical. Sorry, I forgot my words there. Um, because the first half, first kind of 20 minutes, we were just shooting for like 30 yards and it was going all over the place. And I think we will, I was impressed with how we kind of came out the traps there. So I think it will be a similar start. And like I said, I'd like to see you score more than one this week. See, I'm, I, I, I would love everything you've just said, but um, I'm actually going to 
going to copy my result or my guess, sorry, against Queen of the South. I'm going to say win the lackeys. I think it will be a game where Morton, similar to what they did when when they came to came to New Douglas Park, they'll look, they'll, they'll look to sit deep, frustrated, catch on the counter, um, you know, set pieces. Um, I think, again, given the way our back four has been performing and how much we are dominating games, I do think we'll keep a clean sheet. But I don't think... I can see, isn't again a game like when they said we'll nick a goal. I reckon to win it. So, um, so I'm going to go one nil, Aki's. And not to brag, I did get my first points on the board against Queen Elizabeth. Four points, so that was that was nice. Don't worry, I'm still so far behind some people. There are some people I was totting up the league leaderboard the other night. There are some people genuinely that are getting a point nearly every game. I haven't got a single point, have I? I don't think you've got a single point, mate. Ah well, if if the team that matters. End of the day, I would take the one now <laughs> if it's a win. People yeah. would say people would say it was rigged if we won it anyway and like got the prize to ourselves. You know, people would say it was rigged either way. So but, uh, well, like I said, coming into these fixtures, these next kind of four games, including the Kuna South, I say if we even want to be mid table, these are games we'll have to win. We're one for one so far. This is another game we all know is winnable. Um let's just if we, I've always said in the podcast, there's been too many games we've lost because of ourselves. So let's just do us and win it because of ourselves. Do our job. If we play the way we've played um, the last game, then I think we, we should be okay. And hopefully, like I say, I'd like to just start seeing a, a few more comfortable wins. So like I say, that was a comfortable performance, but it wasn't the most comfortable win. Mm. So I'd love to see these two, three now and just be the better team from start to finish. So let's let's start with that on Saturday, hopefully. Yeah, well, let us know your score predictions, of course, over on our tweet. If you comment on the YouTube video, they do not count. You have to comment on our tweet that we will put up on match day. Um, so comment on that to get your score predictions in our league table. There's a little bit of extra uh, kind of want from Farakis to win this game because my girlfriend's family are all Morton fans. And uh, when they beat us... Earlier on in the season, I got a little bit of stick. Oh, so, I remember that. Yeah. I, I, got, I got a lovely tweet. I got a lovely tweet early uh, early hours of the morning uh, with a little bit of stick. So so that's what we can we can repay that. But thank you very much for watching. We hope you did enjoy it, and of course we will see you after the game. <laughs>